My name is uh, Ravi Kara. I'm the Vice President of uh, Oncology at Advanced Clinical, which is a clinical research organization. I am based out of Germany and I head the Oncology Medical Department. Well, I trained in uh, internal medicine and uh, as a part of my training, I was exposed to clinical trials. And at the time, uh, when I was training in uh, India, clinical trials were, uh, let's say, not norm. They were pretty new and they were very uh, infrequent. And what I did realize is that uh, working with one patient at a time, trying to help them is good. But uh, the biggest realization I had is uh, if I'm able to be a part of a drug, a new drug, an innovative product, and bring it to market, at, at a single shot, I'm able to help thousands and millions of patients. And that was the driving force behind. So try to be a part of the drug development process, help bring new drugs to market, and you are going to help hundreds and millions of patients across the globe. So that was uh, uh, the impetus that drove me from uh, clinical practice to join uh, the industry as a uh, uh, clinical developer. Well, uh, I come from uh, a pretty, uh, let's say, a blue collar neighborhood and uh, uh, the family circumstances were uh, pretty similar. And uh, one of the things that uh, I always looked at is uh, where is, what is the kind of profession that I will be able to get a lot of, uh, to start with, uh, respect. Number two, uh, where can I help people the most? Because one of the most uh, common things that we have seen is uh, we have a very good uh, government sector or a public sector for treating patients. We have fantastic physicians, but the infrastructure and uh, all of that was, uh, let's say, not up to the mark. And it was a struggle all the time. And uh, I really felt that uh, this is where I should go, public service, help as many patients as possible. And that's exactly one of the reasons I also chose to concentrate on uh, very difficult to treat uh, indications like uh, head and neck cancer, which uh, 20 years ago was, uh, there were not a lot of drugs, let's say, let's put it that way. It's only the past decade, there have been uh, phenomenal uh, innovations in head and neck cancer. But prior to that, it used to be a disease of uh, blue collar, it used to be a blue collar disease, a lot of smoking, a lot of alcohol. And now the disease paradigm has changed a bit, albeit in certain parts of the world where it has moved away from a disease of alcoholism and smoking to something else. And subsequently we have seen the innovations that have happened in uh, head and neck cancer. Well, uh, I stay uh, with the current with the medical advances, uh, the traditional route of uh, the societies, ASCO, for example, uh, the European Society of Medical Oncology, and there are other tumor-specific uh, societies. And uh, apart from that, uh, of course, uh, the latest uh, one is uh, Onco Daily, where in a single platform, I'm able to get uh, not just the medical uh, latest medical information, but I'm also able to hear and listen and read the perspective from a top uh, oncologist as well as uh, other stakeholders like uh, patient advocacy groups and all. So uh, hats off to Onco Daily there. Patient care essentially means uh, do no harm. That's the basic philosophy where we start with. And if you look at uh, how uh, treatments for cancer evolved, uh, if the tumor didn't kill the patient, if the cancer didn't kill the patient, usually the treatments like heavy treatment like chemotherapy probably did that to a few patients. So patient safety is always uh, first and foremost, and uh, we are always uh, very careful with respect to the benefit risk analysis, not just at uh, the population level, but at each uh, individual patient level. Well, the continuous improvement in profession is, uh, as I said, uh, what is latest, what is new, and uh, the best way to always improve yourself is uh, question the status quo, always. I'm doing certain thing in a certain way. Well, that's probably the best way of doing it as of today, 
but there are new technologies, there are new innovations. I mean, look at how imaging evolved. What used to be just anatomic imaging, the tumor is four centimeters. If it's six centimeters, it has progressed. If it's less, it has, uh, you know, uh, responded to the treatment, whatever the treatment was. We have moved away from that anatomical imaging to uh, functional imaging to now what we call as molecular imaging, including targeted uh, agents like prostate specific membrane antigen, so on and so forth. So those are the kind of uh, cutting edge innovations that have really evolved over the period. And uh, well, uh, the best thing about working uh, in the industry is uh, you are a part of uh, that innovation in certain way, whether you are uh, working in the lab, uh, discovering or inventing the product, or whether you are in a clinical research organization running the clinical trials or whether you are at the hospital the investigator recruiting patients to clinical trial or you are the patient which is basically the heart of what we do and the reason why we exist the patient participating to clinical trials so you are all a part of this uh, journey and this innovation and these are all the stakeholders without whom uh, no progress is possible. Well, Advanced Clinical is a clinical research organization that uh, in fact is headquartered in uh, Deerfield, Chicago. I work from Germany. The motto of Advanced Clinical is a better clinical experience for all our stakeholders, our clients, our investigators, but the most important of all, our patients. Our patients are at the heart of what we do every day as a clinical research organization. They are the ones who are participating to the clinical trials. They are the ones who are providing us with data, which uh, enables us to understand how the disease is, it, which makes us understand if the drug is working or not. And this is what drives us every day that how can we make the patients entering into our clinical trials, their journey, a better clinical experience? Well, uh, growing up, uh, physicians were uh, deemed to be godlike. And it always fascinated uh, how sick people, when they went into the hospitals, whatever reason, uh, physicians were able to treat, most of the times cure, and send the patient back and uh, the look in the face of the patient, of their families, how they felt, all of that was really fascinating as a kid growing up. And then I realized that uh, one of the best public service that you can do is uh, heal as much as possible, cure as much as possible, treat as much as possible, comfort as much as possible every single patient. And that drove me towards medicine and uh, well, getting into a med school is not uh, such an easy task uh, where I come from. Uh, highly competitive and uh, it's even more competitive and a formidable task to get into uh, the specialization you want and then start practicing. So the main reason again to state is uh, wanted to be of uh, help to uh, suffering patients. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.